We almost had another tragedy on our hands. We almost had something very, very, very bad happen to us. It's getting dark because it's dinner time. She takes off and flies off into the darkness. There was nothing we could do that night. So we had to leave Anzu out there in that tree overnight. and welcome back to Pierce's Planet. I am glad I got to make a happy video today because we almost had another tragedy on our hands. We almost had something very, very, very bad happen to us. So I'm making this video as pretty much a learning video so that you don't do what I do and so that you don't make the same mistakes that I made. So long story short, we are out here at Lake Almanor here in California, in Northern California. And we are staying in this house. Pretty nice, pretty nice. And so I decided I wanted to bring my bird Anzu with us. Cool, no problem. Now Anzu is wing, Anzu's wings are not clipped at all. So she is fully flighted. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of clipping wings for birds because I feel like if you have a bird then you should let it fly. That's what they're meant to do. So, we were planning on keeping Anzu in the house the whole time. We brought her out here last year. Um, had a little incident with her. <laughs> had a little incident with her. This is when we, when I first got her, had a little incident. We brought her outside. She wasn't flighted at that time. And she ended up flying away and flying into, into a tree. Luckily, she was low enough to where we were able to get her again. So the first night we get here, she's inside. She's playing. Everything's going right, okay? We go outside, we're about to have dinner. We're sitting outside on the deck having dinner. Now mind you, she does fine outside when it's light outside. She does fine outside when it's light outside. She stays with you. Um, I trust her. You know, you gotta always be careful with flighted birds because if something happens, a loud noise happens or something, they might fly away. So we kept her inside while we were eating. And what we didn't know was that the screen door was off the tracks. And so there was a little gap, a bird size gap that she could fit through. And so as we're eating dinner, I noticed that she's walking through this gap and I said, oh no, you know, Andrew's coming outside. As I said that, everybody starts to get up so that we could go get her. As soon as we get up, she takes off. It's getting dark because it's dinner time. She takes off and flies off into the darkness. So we all get our shoes on, we run after her. We're walking around, we're looking through the trees, and we can hear her, but we can't see her because it's too dark. We got our flashlights on, we got, we're just looking everywhere, calling for her, calling for her, hoping that she's somewhere close that we can get her. We probably looked for, well, at least I probably looked for a, a good three hours, I think. Um, we knew which tree she was in. We knew which, uh, we eventually found the tree that she was in, but we could not see her and she was on no low branches, so. And eventually she just stopped talking. Yes, who's telling the story here, baby? Uh, we both are. Okay. We're missing right. stuff, I got you. Anyway, so yeah, she eventually <laughs> stopped talking and um, it was almost, like we couldn't see her. We couldn't see where she was. My mom, trying to calm me down because I was devastated. We're here with my mom and her husband. My mom was trying to calm me down, trying to tell me everything was gonna be all right. I'm, I don't do well with stress. I was freaking out, thinking I was gonna lose my bird. I wanted to stay out there all night, um, but it was gonna get really cold and we needed to get some sleep. So there was nothing we could do that night. So we had to leave Anzu out there in that tree overnight and resume the search the next day. That was like the last thing I wanted to do, but I knew it was the only thing we could do. There was nothing we could do at that time. The trees, if you look at the trees right here, like these are the type of trees here, the branches, they don't start low. You can't like, no, they you start know what I mean? High. They start high. So we couldn't really be, we couldn't climb into trees. All the trees are like that. We couldn't really climb into the trees and do anything. Um, we, have a, we don't have a ladder here at this cabin. Uh, we don't have access to one at least. Um, so we were kind of kind of screwed. So we had to deal with leaving her outside overnight and hope for the best. In hope the for the best. I was worried. I thought she was gone. Or I was 
Negative, negative Nancy. I thought <laughs> an owl was gonna get her, a raccoon, something. Um, and so I had no hope. So we go to go into the house. I go straight to sleep. Couldn't sleep that night at all, really. Um, I was listening outside, hoping I could hear a sound, well, hoping I couldn't hear a sound and that she would be fine all night. And um, woke up at 4.30 the next day and resumed the search. And so now I wanna take you guys to what tree she was in and where she was at. So let's go over there. So the next day, 4.30 in the morning, we were walking around and we were basically just walking around this whole area. Okay. And I mean, you see all the trees. Literally, she could have been anywhere. We knew she was up in this tree, but we didn't know if she had moved. She wasn't answering back to us or anything. Um, so that next morning we walked around here, we were calling her and calling her and calling her. Um, she was not answering. She was not saying anything at all. And I was getting really, really discouraged. I thought there was no hope. I thought she was gone. I thought a predator might've got her or she just got spooked and flew away in the night and she was gonna be gone. So I was pretty devastated. Anna and my mom were trying to keep it together for me. And so my mom came up with the idea. She was like, why don't we play lorikeet sounds on our phone and see if she'll answer us to that. Sure enough, they started playing lorikeet sounds and she started chirping. And so we knew she was still there. When we finally got a look at her, it was kind of bittersweet because we knew where she was. We knew what tree she was in, but she was at the top of this tree. And when I say at the top of this tree, I mean at the very top of that tree. And this is easily a 50 foot tree, probably taller than that. And as you can see, like we said about the other tree, all the branches are cut off on the bottom until you get to about right up there. So with no ladder, there's no way of getting up into that tree. And if you could see the branches in the tree too, they're kind of skinny, kind of flimsy, and would be very hard to get a grip on and be able to climb into. So we waited, we hung out here, we were calling her, we were playing the lorikeet sounds. We had food out here, um, but you could tell she was scared. She was scared and kind of like stunned in that tree. That's the highest she's ever been. She didn't really know what to do. And so we had to just wait it out for like three hours. We were out here waiting it out. Um, I was really discouraged. I didn't know if we were gonna have to call the fire department or what we were gonna do. I didn't know what we were gonna do. Um, I thought we thought about scaring her out of the tree um, but then I was worried that she would fly out of that tree and go into like one of the even taller trees that are over there. <laughs> so we just waited it out. And then eventually we were down here about three, four hours later, we were down here and we started calling her again. And Anna started waving her hands and you could tell Anzu was like getting excited and she wanted to jump down. And so eventually she kind of jumped down from that top branch and fluttered down and you could tell she kind of felt like it was too steep for her. And so she flew into this tree, but a little bit lower. And then eventually she started climbing down and then eventually flew off and flew and landed right on my shoulder. Whew, when I tell you guys that that was the biggest relief I think I've ever felt in my life, that is an understatement. The only reason why I can tell this story with a smile on my face is because it has a happy ending. It was an incredible feeling. And so that's the only reason why I can smile while I make this video. That could have easily turned into a tragedy. And if you guys watch my video with Grim, my snake that died recently, I couldn't take much more of, you know, things like that, um, mistakes. It just would have sucked. So I can make this video with a smile on my face because she came back to us, but we just got lucky, man. We got lucky. I mean, look at this tree. This tree is huge, man. It's 50 feet tall and I'm glad she made it through the night. So just learn from my mistakes. And if you're going to have a flighted bird, a bird that can fly, um, just know that that could happen. That's a potential, um, that's a possibility is that your bird can fly away. That's what they do. That's one thing you guys gotta know about captive birds and captive parrots is that even though they're a bird, uh, being up that high for the first time ever for Anzu, 
she's not just gonna naturally feel like she can fly and fly away and just fly straight down to me she's gonna be scared she was just staring straight down and seeing how high up she was and it spooked her and it kind of made her freeze a little bit but over time in, by encouraging her and by us being there and calling her name and not sounding panicked we'll try my best not to sound panic panicked um it kind of gave her that confidence into where she eventually was able to just kind of let go and flutter down. And then you could tell she got a little nervous all halfway down and went into the next tree. And then she started climbing down. But just because it's a bird doesn't mean it's not going to be afraid when it's in a situation like that, in an unknown situation like that, in a tree, you know? So just something, food for thought, just something you want to keep in the back of your mind if you are a parrot or a bird owner. That is a risk that you're going to take when having a flighted bird. I choose to have my bird flighted because I feel like it's unfair for the bird to not be able to fly. It's a bird. It's, that's what it's born to do is fly. I'm just glad that this has a happy ending and that this this could have went wrong in, on, in so many ways. So I gotta say thank you to my girlfriend for, you know, kind of trying to calm me down. I gotta say thank you to my mom, uh, to Lou, her husband. They all, you know, kind of talked me down and helped me out a lot because I was really going through it with all this and i you know that night when we had to leave her and i knew she was going to be out there for the night i had no hope um yeah none at all so i'm just happy that i could sit here today and say that we got her back and hopefully that never happens again just make sure you check your surroundings when you take your birds somewhere you're checking your surroundings and you you kind of block off all uh, points of entry and exit because I would hate to have something like this happen to one of you guys. It was not a good feeling at all. I was sick to my stomach all night and then all morning the next morning. Um, and I didn't even know once we even found her, I didn't know if we were gonna be able to get her down. I mean, that's, that's tall. So just got lucky. Just wanted to put this video out there so that you guys seen it and saw what happened. And man, I keep these past couple of videos, I just keep effing up, huh? yeah it's been rough it's been a rough, it's been a rough uh, couple of weeks for me and my animals but we're getting through it but as you guys can see all it was a happy ending stop getting to my ear so that's the only reason why i can make this video smiling because it ended happy and anzu is back and as playful as ever i know i know you were scared out there huh you were scared out there huh did you, did you hear something did you hear? Some? I didn't hear anything either. I know. I, I didn't hear anything either. My little Anzu bird. How scared were you guys? Oh, forget. I was like crying. Stop. <laughs> yeah. I had faith. I'm the only one that had faith. <laughs> yeah, they had faith. I definitely did not have faith. Jan and Peter over there. Yeah. <laughs> I was just worried. I was just worried about my little Zuzi. I was just worried about you. But luckily, luckily, this story has a happy ending. I wouldn't have been able, after Grimm, if this would have happened, I would have just been devastated. Yeah, who knows? Oh my I God, a vulture's gonna come and take her out of the tree. It wasn't a vulture, it wasn't a vulture, it was an owl. An owl. It was an owl. I was scared, I was scared. Everybody so, scared everybody. as you can see, Anzu is alive and well and happy as ever. She had her little adventure for the weekends, so just glad to have her back so that's that's all i got for a video today you guys so until next time my name is pierce lavalley this is anzu we are in pierce's planet and remember it's all about the revs baby peace. take care of your animals peace <laughs>